So there's a story, there's something I've always wanted to tell my dad, and you can't do anything about it, there's too many witnesses. <laughs> and it's that when you use the phrase back in my day to compare your life to mine, I just stop listening to you. <laughs> Not that I really listened in the first place, but comparing your life to mine is like comparing apples to oranges. You woke up at 6 in the morning to feed the cow. I woke up at 6 in the morning to feed myself. You allegedly had to walk five miles uphill both ways. <laughs> I had to run up the hill to catch the bus. This difference extends farther than just our, how we get up in the morning. It extends to how we'd have to defend our personal image. What, how we get our news and what news we receive. So, for you, your personal life was fairly simple. You had to talk with your friends on the phone, over mail, and in person. For me, it's a lot more complex. I have to talk over the phone, mail, in person, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, texting, email, and so many more social media sites that exist that I don't actually want to use. <laughs> and this is a problem because having to manage all of these different platforms makes my social life almost a full-time job. <laughs> Trying to figure out what people say about me, what people say about other people, and what I want to say. Thinking, figuring out what I want to say is a big problem as well because since it's on the internet, it'll stay there forever. If you wanted to show your friend an image, in a magazine let's say, it would go away after a while. They'd laugh at you, they'd tease you, they think you're a weird old man, but eventually it would go away and it wouldn't affect your future. For me, if I want to share an image, I have to think, what is my future family going to think about this? What are my future friends going to think about this? And what is my future boss going to think about this? If any of those are things that I don't want them to think, I can't share that. So, for you, the news was simple as well. For you, you had the radio, you had the newspaper, and you had the old guy on the TV. <laughs> for me, I have those things as well, but I also have, in all its glory, the internet. On every single news story that comes out, I have, ev I have all the humans that are connected to the internet trying to tell me what the news is. And as an example, during the Paris attacks, I had conspiracy theorists trying to tell me that France attacked its own people. I had the mainstream media telling me this is the facts, this is what we know. I had Facebook telling me about the heroics of that day, all the people who saved countless lives. And I have the politicians telling me that we're going to go find out if sand can glow in the dark. And trying to figure out what is truth and what is not in this is very difficult. Because you have to go through the sources and try to figure out what people, where people came with these conclusions. And this is another full-time job. Because on every single news story that comes out, this happens. And I have to determine what I want to believe. And for you, your news was also very, very simple. For you, it was... The, co uh, the communists are bad. <laughs> and you knew that they were a threat. You knew that it might happen, but it was a long ways away, and you'd know it was coming. For me, I don't know where my threats are going to come from and how they're going to come. I have climate change. I have economic instability. I have terrorism. And I have, what, like lots of people say, the refugee crisis. All of these are threats to me and to our modern world that I have to try to devote some time to. And if I try to devote time to every single one of these issues, nothing will ever get done. And I have to, my generation has to pick some kind of issue that we should focus on. And trying to figure this out is just incredibly difficult on top of our two other full-time jobs and school, and sports. So, I know I've projected a fairly bleak <laughs> projection for the future, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. 
My generation is the future, and if we keep get being force-fed the solution, yesterday's solutions for today's problems, we are doomed to repeat the failures of the past. But if we start thinking of today's solutions to solve today's problems, the future looks bright. So let's stop focusing on back in my day, and let's start focusing on here in our day. Thank you.